Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. This year's class representatives for student government were announced a few weeks ago. And on today's show, you'll meet the class of 2021 officers, as well as learning what these students do in their respective roles. Plus, with COVID-19 affecting many of our normal routines at school, you'll learn how the Media Center is handling its checkout system in the middle of a pandemic. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us. I'm Carly Flanagan. And I'm Cora Shaw. You probably heard about or even participated in the voting of student government class officers a few weeks ago. But do you know who the representatives are and the roles they take on making Homestead better for all students? HHS In-Depth reporter Michelle Obiyama is in with part one of her four-part series introducing you to the class of 2021 officers. A couple of weeks ago, you may have noticed that Homestead held an election for various student council positions. Many students still do not know who their student council officers are. In the coming weeks, I'll introduce you to your class officers, starting with the senior class, to get a glimpse into why they chose to run and how they think they can improve the halls of Homestead. Student government organizes all the events that Homestead does, such as prom, semi-formal, homecoming, all that stuff is organized by student government. The purpose of student government is to help facilitate all the events you'll see during the year, prom, formal, senior activities day, that, that's all run through student government. I was motivated to join student government because I knew I had some fun ideas for activities we could do for the school and my friends were in it and they always said that it was fun to come up with ideas to improve the school. I just realized that I was very involved with my school during my high school tenure, so I just wanted to, you know, get more involved in everything that Homestead does because I really like the school. I wanted to pick up more leadership roles throughout the student body. I've been really focusing on improving my involvement around the building uh, these last few years, and it was an open position, and I, I figured why not. Getting used to student government during COVID-19 takes some time. So I was in student government last year. Obviously, COVID's going to change things this year. Last year, prom got canceled. We're going to have to take that into account whenever we're planning things. This year is different than other years because when we plan activities, we have to keep in mind that we have to social distance and we have to run things through the health board. So we have to be innovative and find new ways to plan activities where we can keep everyone safe. I hope that this student government this year, especially with all the craziness that we've undergone that we can come out of this year with events that are truly unique to this year and, and events that will leave a lasting impact years to come. As new and returning student council members settle into the positions, be sure to be on the lookout for the committee's numerous contributions to the halls of Homestead. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Michelle Biyama. Lost and found items are located on the tables outside of the discipline office in the 1012 building. See Mrs. Godfrey in the Discipline Office for valuable items such as jewelry, keys, electronics, and designer clothes. All items not picked up by the end of the day today will be donated. Did you recently have Read and Write installed in your computer and now it's gone? Please take your laptop to room 900 to have the program reinstalled. If you've received an email indicating you still need the software installed, you also need to stop by room 900. Students, please visit the attendance window located just inside door number one if you need to pick up an early dismissal pass, are dropping off an excused note, have received a pass from Mrs. Tomkevich or Mrs. Anderson, or have any attendance questions. If you are expecting something to be dropped off at the building, enter Mrs. Stoner's office and look on the table to the left. If your item is not on the table, it has not been dropped off yet. K-Pop Club meets today after school in room 924. Today after school, Homestead Young Progressives Club is having its next meeting. Come down to Mrs. Smith's room, number 614, to answer presidential debate questions with the Young Americans for Freedom. Everyone is welcome regardless of political affiliation, and snacks will be provided. It seems like we're starting to get used to all the changes that COVID-19 has brought to us each school day. But have you been curious about the changes at the checkout system that takes place in the Media Center? To learn more about how our library is adapting to the pandemic, Here's HHS In-Depth reporter Andre Sentliver. The Homestead Library is a place where students can study and read. However, due to the current circumstances, checking out books will be a little bit different from the previous years. You don't necessarily have to come in, but if you do want to come in, you certainly may do so. We are open from the time you guys are allowed into school, which is 730, 
and then we close at about 255. You can get online um, if you go to the Media Center, it's from Homestead's page, Resources, and then Media Center to check out books and to search our card catalog, you can use something called Destiny Discover. And you simply log in using your student ID and locker combo. In there, you can search the catalog. You can place holds on books. You can send us messages. And we can even check a book out to you, put it on the cart outside the library. So if you're walking by, you can pick it up. Although Homestead has ebooks that can be accessed online, the library is instituting rules so the physical books can be kept clean. The main restrictions we have right now are I can't have more than one student per aisle while they're browsing for books, so that's why the assigned seats. And I have to quarantine books for a week after I get them back. If you are interested in checking out a library book, be sure to stop by the library before, after, or during school. For HHS In-Depth, I'm Andre Santlover. Cora, Carly, back to you. Thanks, Andre. When we come back, you'll learn about all of the options Fort Wayne offers for seniors to take those ever-important senior pictures, as well as learn about the procedures of keeping everyone safe now that clubs are back once again at Homestead High School. We're we'll bringing you that and more after the break. Stay tuned to HHS In Depth. Be sure to watch our next show as HHS In Depth reporter Michelle Obiyama takes a look at the members of Homestead's Junior Class Officers, part two of her four-part series that introduces you to the members of your student government. That and more on the next HHS In Depth. Auditions for the Fall Play, an evening of monologues, will take place Thursday, October 15th from 3 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. in the choir room. Please go prepared with 30 seconds of a memorized monologue of your choice. Monologues will then be selected and assigned following casting. Please sign up for an audition time outside Mr. Shaw's room, room 404. New to Homestead Theater, no worries. See Mr. Shaw if you have any questions about the show or the audition process. They look forward to seeing you at the auditions on October 15th. The Food Service Department is excited to announce that beginning Monday, October 12th, they will be offering free breakfast to all students as a part of the USDA's new program. This breakfast will be offered in the cafeteria from 7.30 to 7.40 a.m. each morning. They hope to see you there. Biomedical Science Club will host a call-out informational meeting on Thursday, October 15th from 2.45 to 3 o'clock in room 215. If you have any questions or are interested in becoming a member but cannot attend, please contact Mrs. Behrens at the email address shown here. Catan Club meets after school on Wednesdays in room 932. Go join them for a fun round of Settlers of Catan, a board game full of trading and strategy. With fall break starting next week, it's that time of the year for seniors to be thinking of getting their senior pictures taken. To help you learn about some of the most popular places to take those photos in Fort Wayne, here's HHS and Depth reporter Nada Dehook. It's tradition for seniors to take senior photos to remember their time at Homestead. Many seniors prefer this weather to take their pictures, and Fort Wayne has the perfect places to do it. Downtown Fort Wayne has countless places to take photos, but if you're looking for a more artsy background, try the streets filled with paintings. Each mural is hand-painted by local artists, and with a variation of different patterns and prints, every senior is sure to find the perfect background for their photos. Although unexpected, outside the Allen County Courthouse makes the perfect place for a photo shoot. The building is an architectural masterpiece by itself, but the flower garden in the front of the building makes the scenery even better. And one of the most popular places to take photos is the bridge located in Promenade Park. It gives every picture a unique depth you cannot find anywhere else. But if you're looking for a more rural area, try Salomon Farm Park on DuPont Road. What put this farm on the map is their field of sunflowers that is open to take photos in. The two acres of these bright yellow flowers keeps visitors COVID safe as there is plenty of space to social distance. Whether you prefer the city or farm atmosphere for your senior photos, come out and take them during this fall break, while the weather is still perfect for a city walk and the sunflowers are still blooming. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Nana Dehook. Recently, clubs have been given the green light to start back up again. To learn about the new procedures for keeping everyone safe at these after-school activities, here's HHS In Depth reporter Roland McMillan. Now that clubs and other after-school activities are officially back up and running, many students are encouraged to both participate and be a part of these activities. We have extracurriculars, co-curriculars, and club activities, and our goal is that every student is a part of at least one of those activities. 
to have another great reason to come to school and be a part of a group that um, have the same interests. So how have after school activities changed due to COVID-19? Some of our procedures for after school, before school clubs have changed because we have to keep in mind everything that we do during the school day as well. The distancing, the safety precautions, wearing of the masks, etc. But just like academic classes, some clubs will also be meeting virtually, whether if that's through Zoom sessions or other virtual methods. We have several different sponsors and student leaders who are considering Zoom for clubs after school. I should say a hybrid of Zoom and in-person meetings to also allow those students who have chosen real time or need, need to be at home to take part in those clubs. The same rules, guidelines, and procedures that you use during school will be present during the clubs that you attend after school. Since the after school events, the club's activities are privileges, then we, if students can't follow the rules that are in place for those meetings, then we would ask that student to not participate any longer. I'd just like to reiterate how important it is for students to be involved. We'd like for everybody to have an opportunity to be a part of an athletic group, performing arts group, and or a club, so that they have yet another reason to come to our amazing school. And now you know how you can be involved in your favorite after school activities while reducing the chance of everyone around you receiving COVID-19. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Rowan McMillan. Have you been frustrated with the lack of high quality images you can search for in Google on your new school laptop? If so, here's a quick fix to help you the next time you do a search. Here's HHS In-Depth reporter Easton Hensley. When searching with Google Images on Homestead's laptops, many pictures on the front page do not show up, making it difficult to find the information you may need. However, there is a simple solution to access any images you may be searching for. The next time you do a Google Image search, click Settings, Advanced Search, then scroll down and click the blue Advanced Search icon. This should filter through most of the blocked images shown and help you more quickly find the information you're looking for so you can get back to work. Reporting for HHS In-Depth, I'm Easton Hensley. Turning to weather now, this week has certainly been the coldest week so far of the school year. So can we expect the same for tonight? Jenna Lane joins us now with a check of the game night forecast. Homestead faces Carroll at the game tonight, and despite lots of heat between the teams, the temperature will stay cool in the upper 40s. As the sun sets during the game, you can expect the temperature to drop to the low 40s, so you might want to bring along some Spartan apparel to stay warm. You can expect some humidity in the air, and there will be cloudy skies throughout the game. I'll be back later on with a check of the seven-day forecast. All right, thank you, Jenna. Next in sports, Homestead up its win streak to five games on the football field and sets up their showdown with Carroll tonight. And our girls' golf team qualified for another golf state championship in record-breaking fashion last weekend. Plus, find out how our other athletic teams did this past week. Ashton and Caleb are in next with sports. We'll be right back. It's Rivalry Week in the SAC. Tonight, Homestead versus Carroll. With a conference title on the line, the Spartans must win this game to keep the victory bell for another year. Watch the game on Homestead Live or listen on the Point 91 FM. Kickoff at 7. Welcome back, I'm Ashton Ackman. It's Rivalry Week in the SAC. Northrop versus Snyder, the Battle of the Bishops, Northside versus Southside, and Carroll versus Homestead. After six weeks of the season, three teams are tied atop the conference. Homestead controls their own destiny. If they win tonight, no one can catch them in the SAC. As we gear up for week seven of conference football action, Homestead kept it rolling last week with their fifth straight win in the conference this season. With a recap of the game against Northside last week and standings from the SAC, here's sports reporter Caleb Wood. Week six of high school football, Homestead still in the SAC title hunt. Last Friday, it's the Northside Legends here at home. Homestead getting off to a rough start after a Northside touchdown. The Spartans still haven't given up a point in the first half since week one until now, but second quarter would be different. Evan Ormsby to Jared Kistler gets the Spartans on the board for the first time. Next up, it's Ethan Chambers receiving the 19-yard pass, a touchdown for Homestead tying it up 14-14 in the second quarter. Spartans looking to take the lead over Northside. In the red zone, it's Nick Sudarth subbing in for Hardwick. He gets his first touchdown on the season from four yards out. 
Spartans now up by 7 points, but that would not be enough for them, as the very next kickoff out of nowhere, it's Austin Kieser with the tackle. Northside fumbles and Isaac Barks picks it up and runs it right back into the end zone. Spartan fans really excited after that one. Homestead leading Northside at the half 28 to 14. Third quarter, Ormsby passes to Ethan Chambers. It's deflected, but he grabs the ball. Homestead still with the lead 35 to 21 after another Northside touchdown. Nate Anderson widening the point gap with not one, but two touchdowns, won a 52 yard pass and no one to stop him. The two point conversion is no good but shortly after, it's Evan Ormsby with the quarterback keeper. He fights his way over the goal line. This time, the two-point conversion is good. Homestead winning this one 56-36. Same three teams from last week tied at the top of the conference with now a 5-1 record, but at least one of those teams will be knocked down tonight as Homestead faces off in the rivalry game versus Carroll here at home. Snyder moved up to fourth after a win over Wayne and Northside dropping down with a 2-4 record. That's all for SAC football this week. Taking a look at recent Homestead athletic action over the past week, the Homestead girls golf team punched their ticket to the state finals in record-breaking fashion last Saturday, winning their fifth straight East Noble Regional. The team shot five under par, which is both a Homestead record and a East Noble Regional record. Maddie DeBeja and Simone Sink tied for medalist honors, both shooting four under par. The team teed off this morning at 8.30 and is currently in day one action on the greens at Carmel. They wrap up the state match tomorrow morning. The girls soccer team took down Northrop on Monday night, winning 4-1 over the Bruins. Spartans were led by Sophia Citrone shooting two goals, plus Sophia White and Sarah Pori both scoring one goal each. They now set 11-2 on the season as they gear up to face Culver Academy tomorrow morning. The boys played on Wednesday night, falling to Concordia 1-0. They now sit at 6-6-2 on the season as they get the weekend off. The Homestead volleyball team was in action against Leo on Wednesday night, falling to the Lions 3-1. Senior Anna Moster led the team with 11 kills. Ellie Spang had 11 digs, and Haley Biedenbach had 5 aces. The team will be in action at Jay County in the morning. Both cross-country teams were in action at the New Haven Classic over the weekend. Both teams placed fourth in fields of over 200 runners. The girls were led by freshman Addison Canablo, who placed second. On the boys' side, two Spartans broke into the top 20. Junior Ethan Bates led the team with a sixth-place finish, and senior Donnie McArdle placed 20th. The girls have the weekend off, while the boys head to the Nike Twilight down in Terre Haute, as both teams gear up for sectionals next Saturday. And in boys' tennis, the postseason has begun, and it's important to note that this segment was pre-recorded before the conclusion of the sectional final. On Wednesday night, they took down Bishop Lures 5-0. It would be Homestead's seventh straight sectional title and 39th program title. And a note for future newscasts, be looking at the bottom of your screen to see the latest results from Homestead Athletics. The ticker down there will loop several times throughout the segment, so if you miss anything, you can always check down below for results. That's all for sports. Jenna has a final check of the forecast after the break. Heading into the break, we'll have some typical fall-like weather with highs in the 60s and lows that remain in the 40s. You can expect very little wind with a slight chance of rain. The highest likelihood of showers is on Sunday, and progressing through the week, we will see that chance continue to drop. With overcast skies, this would be a great chance to stay cozy inside and get ready for the fall season. All in all, not a bad week to be at home if you aren't going anywhere over our first ever fall break. All right, Jenna, thank you. And thank you for watching today. Don't forget that the Homestead Spartans are back in action tonight at home against Carroll. You can watch all of the action on Homestead Media's YouTube channel with the OPS pregame show with Ashton Hackman coming on at 6.30 p.m. and Matt Salfrank and Chris Corman on the call set for 7 p.m. You can also get quarterly score updates by checking the Locker Report's Twitter page. We'll be off next week for fall break, but we'll see you again in two weeks. Have a great weekend and fall break.